Well, good afternoon. Um, I know my days to do devotions are on Monday, but I've been sitting on this because God's been revealing a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. So this is actually going to be one of our messages for our Bible study in detail. But I want to talk to you today about the disciples back when Jesus um, was walking with them and when he left this earth. Um, because when Jesus left this earth, we know that the disciples went throughout the nations, right? And um, turned the world upside down. So they were able to uh, do many things in the name of Jesus because Jesus gave them the power and the authority to use his name to do these things. Uh, <clears throat> So, I want to come to you out of the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and we're going to start at verse uh, 25, because this is going to, this, this is our foundation, right? Uh, and then I'm going to build on that. So, um, Hebrews 12, 25 says, no, you have come to Mount Zion to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to thousands of angels in joyful assembly. You've come to the kingdom, right? Um, you have come to the assembly of God's firstborn children whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God himself, who is the judge of all people. And you have come to the spirits of the redeemed in heaven, who have now been made perfect. You have come to Jesus, the one who mediates the new covenant between God and people, and to the sprinkled blood by gracious Forgiveness instead of crying out for vengeance as the blood of Abel did. See to it that you obey God, the one who is speaking to you. For if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, who was the earthly messenger, how terrible our danger if we reject the one who speaks to us from heaven when God spoke from Mount Sion his voice shook the earth but now he makes another promise once again I will shake not only the earth but the heavens too this means that the Things on earth will be shaken so that only eternal things will be left, will remain. Since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, let us be thankful and pleased by God by worshiping him with holy fear and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, I just humbly come before the throne, God. Thank you, Father, for this word. Thank you for shaking and shaking and shaking because you said you would shake everything up that is not of you because only kingdom things can be in your presence. We thank you for this, Father. We thank you that in the shaking that we never return to it again. So that people can look to what you have done in our lives, Father, so they too can become unshakable. In Jesus' name, I give you this word. I step behind the cross and allow you, Holy Spirit, to come forth. 
In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh my goodness. So, this is saying, right, that you've come to the, to the kingdom. You've come to the throne, right? And you can only enter that after everything is shaken out of you. So this is talking about a people that have been shaken. And it says um, in verse 23, you have come to the assembly of God's firstborn children whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God himself. You're in the throne room who is the judge of all people. And you have come to the spirits of the redeemed in heaven who have now been made perfect. Well, who is the perfect one? Christ. He is our mediator, right? So in order for the mediator to um, work inside you, right? It has to be cleared of sin. And so it talks about the shaking. It talks about how Moses was relaying messages and the people refuse to hear. So in saying that, what is what remains is the only thing that can enter the kingdom. God has shaken and shaken and shaken and it, and it talks about all the shaking that he's gonna do, right? And some of us are operating in that. Um, let me ask you a question. What is the difference between the disciples back then to disciples in 2024? Remember, God is not a respecter of person. And God separates those he has called and he uses things for his glory. So what is the difference between Peter, Paul, um, Matthew, Mark, the things that they did to the disciples today? Nothing but their belief. John 14, 12 says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. So Jesus is telling uh, telling people here that in the future that the disciples will do greater things because they didn't see, but they believed anyway. That, that that is just amazing to me so what what things is he talking about if you recall the disciples they went into the nations and they were um, healing people they were praying for people and, and, and watching the sick get healed uh, the brokenhearted um, became whole uh, setting captives free delivering demons like they, casting them to the pits of hell, sending them where they belong. So if they were doing that then, why are we not operating in the same power? In the same spirit? Because Matthew 16, 19 says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you permit on earth shall be permitted in heaven. He's handing us the keys to the kingdom. Why would he be handing them to us now if we're not at the kingdom yet? It's because the kingdom's within. And so he's giving us the keys to unlimited um, resources. Um, there's no limitations in God. He's not, well, I can only do this or I can only, he's the creator of all things. 
So when we walk in that belief, when we walk in the kingdom anointing, when we walk with unlimited resources and unlimited power in the authority in the name of Jesus Christ, things happen. Um, and it was evident. Even, even um, Paul or Peter would walk through a town and people would just sit on the road and just by him walking by, they were being healed. Why? Because the kingdom of God was within. They believed. They walked in that authority. They cast out demons, right? So why can't we do that today? Why can we see some people walking in kingdom power? Well, Acts 19, 15 says, but one time they tried it. The evil spirits replied, oh, I know Jesus and I know Paul, but who are you? Are there skeptics out there? Do people believe parts of the Bible, but not all of it? Do they truly believe that they have Christ within them, kingdom power, to do the things that John 14, 12 said? Greater things, right? Luke 10, 19 says, Look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. Not because of them or what they were wearing or who they were with, but because Jesus said, I'm giving you the authority to do so. Matthew 13, 14 says, this fulfills the prophecy because we have skeptics out there, right? That want to excuse everything or have an explanation, right? Of what they think. Matthew 13, 14 says, this fulfills the prophecy of Isaiah that says, when you hear what I say, you will not understand. When you see what I do, you will not comprehend. For the hearts of the people are hardened and their ears cannot hear and have closed their eyes so the eyes cannot see and ears cannot hear and hearts can understand and they cannot turn to me and let me heal them. Are there things in our lives that we are going blind to because we want to try to excuse it or compromise or not go against what everybody else is thinking? What are you going to stand for? Because if we conform with the little things, then we'll conform to anything. The word of God is truth. It produces life and it has power in the name of Jesus. Is the kingdom within? And if so, are you accessing everything that God has for you? Or are you a skeptic? Are you one of the ones that are trying to excuse it off or compromise? Well, we'll just say this because we don't want all the drama, right? Or we'll just make it look like because they're gonna think we're crazy. Are you sold out to Christ to be able to stand for what is true? Or are you gonna to conform to the world? Remember, there are things that are going to happen in a true believer's life like it did the disciples then. They were persecuted, they were hated. Um, they all died a horrible death. 
Um, they were hung, uh, poisoned, boiled, like, and who would do that? Who would suffer for something that they did not believe in? We will today too. There will be naysayers and they will try to excuse it off and they will be the ones that go with the crowd just as the Pharisees did, right? But they couldn't see that the kingdom was right in front of them. They couldn't hear Jesus speaking because they were too much of in a box. What are some things that you are truly not believing in? Maybe it's time to get back with the Father and get those things shaken out. Now, those that remain, that have become unshakable, that are walking in kingdom power and kingdom authority, get ready. Get ready because you are about to become the tool that shakes people to wake up. Things that they can't excuse off but accept the excuse. God is going to bring that to light so that it is shaken. Get ready. Because He's about to do a move where the church is like the old church and is going to understand walking in kingdom power and what that brings upon. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just, I thank you, God. I thank you that we may have naysayers, God, and we may have people that talk about us, and we may have people that persecute us and doubt us, Father God, but God, you have made us unshakable to believe what the Word of God says and that it can be done, not by our own might or strength or power, but in yours. God, you said in the last days that you will find the worshipers that will worship in truth and spirit. Father God, the remnant is rising. I ask that you just equip everybody with strength so when the wind blows and it gets tough, and you want to give up and you want to give in and let me just tell them what they want to hear God that you are raising a people that will stand on the word so it'll glorify who you are we praise you God we thank you God use us God so others can be unshakable too and it's in the mighty precious name of Jesus amen So this is the day that God has made. Go be productive for it. Win, win people by your light shining and standing for the one who stood for you. Become unshakable no matter what they throw at you, no matter what the situation looks like. Stop conforming and stand on what the Word of God is saying. Some of us need to cut some stuff off because we've allowed what they believe now infiltrate how we see. The Word of God doesn't change. It's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It's a double-edged sword, and it'll cut stuff off. It'll remove some stuff, it'll shake some stuff. So in that shaking, let God reveal 
the kingdom that he is trying to rise up inside you. Take authority of that. Own it. And watch what happens when you enter a room or a situation because you bring kingdom power and authority in the name of Jesus with you that nothing is impossible. Love you guys and remember he loves you more and Jesus lives.